Oh. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about silk dyeing and Glinda's bubble dress. Last spring, I made a video going over how I made the base skirt that all of these petals are going to get attached to. The skirt that I made in this video had a very wonky hem and it was ripping in the placard as well as at the waistband. And ultimately it wasn't gonna be strong enough to hold 30 pounds of sequins and fabric that make up all of these petals. I need to give it a redo. My plan is to use a stronger fabric and add just a little bit more structure to really Really help support the weight of these petals. Also, I've learned a few new things that might help me create a better, stronger base. But first, I think it's time to go thrifting for a dye pot. We are making our way to some thrift stores today to see if I can find a dye pot. Basically, because when I silk dye, you have to actually keep the temperature at a certain degree for a certain amount of time and it's a lot harder to do when I boil water and put that in a bucket. Let's go. To dye my silk, I'm going to fill my dye pot three quarters of the way with warm water and set it on my stove on high temperature. I bought my silk acid dye and dye detergent from Dharma Trading and I'm also using their guide on how to dye my silk so check the comments for links to help. While my water is warming up I submerge my silk organza in warm water in my sink and I add a cap full of the detergent. I hand wash my fabric making sure to wear gloves to protect my hands from both the detergent and the dye. Then I will leave my fabric in there while I measure and prep my dye. In Dharma Trading's tutorial, they say that one pound of fabric equals two and a quarter teaspoons of dye. They recommend being precise in this and despite my decision to eyeball it, I recommend following their instructions and not following how I measured this out. Pre-dissolve the dye with a little bit of hot water and stir with the spoon. Make sure all of the powder is dissolved or you could end up with speckles of dye in some places. Once the dye is dissolved, I can pour it into my water and stir. Then I can add my fabric to my water and wait for the temperature to reach 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Once I'm at temperature, I can add one quarter of a cup of vinegar while I hold my fabric to the side and then I can stir everything together. I will keep my fabric in the dye bath for 10 minutes while holding 180 degree temperature. Once time's up, I can wash the fabric again with the detergent and rinse the fabric until the water runs clear. Well, this is how my fabric turned out. While this color is absolutely beautiful, it's just not gonna work for this project. I'm pretty sure I figured out what went wrong, but I just can't justify spending more money on this project. So I went ahead and dyed some polyester organza. I'm very confident that the structure that I'm going to be adding to the base skirt is gonna be strong enough to do the job. So let's get to making the base of this skirt. I pulled out the pattern I made for my mock-up and the first base skirt attempt, and I cut out one on the fold and then two pieces with three quarters of an inch added seam allowance. This skirt is basically a three quarters circle skirt, so it really shouldn't be that hard to make. I start by sewing the side seams as a flat felled seam. This is a seam that I use for hoop skirts and peignet because it strengthens the seam, which helps it carry added weight like hooping wire or 55 sequin petals. To sew a flat felt seam, I sew my fabric wrong sides together. Then I press my seam open and trim one side of the seam. From there, I fold the other seam over the short side, tucking both raw edges into the seam and then stitching it down from there. This is rather hard to do when the seam is on the bias and honestly, it did not turn out too cute. I probably would have been better off with French seams, but here we are. For the placket, I just used the one on the black snail's walking skirt pattern. I cut out a square of fabric interfacing and fused it to my organza. And then I cut out the pieces from that square. I decided to serge the edges because it was fast and easy. And then I attached the thinner side to the right back panel, right sides together, pressed, then folded it in and stitched it down. I took the wider section and stitched it right sides together at the bottom, then flipped it and stitched the raw edge right sides together on the left back panel of my skirt. Oh no. Oh no, did I sew this? 
to get, oh no. This right here is why Seam Reapers exist. I did in fact sew this together wrong and had to rip out the back seam and re-sew it together before I could add a waistband using pre-made double fold bias tape. This waistband is actually a placeholder for now. Once petals are added, I will be making a different waistband, so stay tuned for a later video then. Last night, I was laying in bed stressing about two major issues that I had with the base skirt so far. The first, the waist is actually too big, so I decided to pleat it down and the pleat over the seam looks absolutely miserable. And then the second was that I actually ripped the organza right below the placard and I tried to mend it, it wasn't cute. So I decided I was gonna redo that back seam. I thought that would solve both of the size problem as well as the rip problem. To do this, I decided to take it apart. I cut one and a half inches off of each side of this back seam and I surged those edges completely. And then I replaced the placards and sewed it back up. Now that I have solved the side pleat problem and the patch problem, it's time to hem this skirt and add some structure to it. My friend Sarah made this amazing skirt last week to help support skirts that she will be wearing over it. And I thought that this was actually a really brilliant idea and way that I could add structure to my Glinda base skirt. What I'll be doing is I will be taking my four inch wide horsehair braid and I will be layering it up above the skirt. I think I'll add like five rows of it. I'm, I don't have all the math figured out right this moment, but we're gonna figure that out. Before we can do that, we do need to hem the base. So let's talk about some horsehair braid. Horsehair braid is made up of tiny plastic strands to make this stiff material that can help hems stand up on their own. To add it to the hem of my my skirt, I start by pinning it about a half inch away from the edge of my skirt hem. Once it's pinned, I cut it off of the roll and pin bias tape onto each of the edges to keep the plastic from ripping my fabric. Once that is sewn, I can sew the pinned horsehair braid to the fabric. Then I will sew a basting stitch about a quarter inch from the top of the horsehair braid. Now I will take it back to my table and press it away from my skirt. Then fold it to the wrong side and press that bottom edge before sewing it down. To sew the top edge down, I will pin it and pull up the basting stitches to gather it and get it to fit in the smaller circumference up the skirt. Finally, I can sew that top edge down. Now to place the horsehair braid up the skirt, I'm going to measure two inches from the bottom of the hem piece of horsehair braid and pin the next strip there. Once this is pinned on the bottom, I can add bias tape to the edges, sew the bottom down, add a basting stitch to the top, gather, pin, sew the top down, and repeat two more times until I have four strips of horsehair braid going up the skirt. All of the construction elements are done, but before I can share the reveal, I have one more decorative piece to finish. As a thank you to everyone who supported me on Patreon and donated to my Kofi goal for this costume, I'm stitching their names into the base of this skirt. If you are interested in helping me purchase more sequins as I make the petals, obviously we're going to need more sequins, then please consider donating to my Kofi below and you can get your name stitched into the base of this skirt as well. Now let's get some names stitched out and get this skirt wrapped up. The first thing I did was stitch out some tests. Ideally, I could stitch the names directly onto the hem with the horsehair braid, but it looked like it worked the organza too much and that's not great for the integrity of the gown. So I tried ribbon, but I had a similar problem. Finally, cotton with tearaway stabilizer would have to do. I started by typing the name into my decorative stitch and then stitching it out onto a two inch wide strip of cotton. This step took four hours and I listened to so many YouTube videos, but once the names were done, I could tear away the stabilizer, press the top and bottom inwards, pin the strip to the base and sew it down. Now it's time for the reveal.
All right, friends, so now we have a base skirt for Glinda's bubble dress. A couple things that I want to address about silk dyeing that I think would have worked for me better. The two major things that I think I should have done differently for this than I did is that the first thing is way less dye, even though, okay, first I didn't measure the dye very well, but even so, way less dye, probably a quarter of what they suggested. That's typically what I did when I did the organza. And then the second thing is, is the amount of time that I had my fabric in the dye bath. I probably should have started at five minutes and worked my way up from there. I definitely want to try silk dyeing again in the future for another project at some point. So we will return to that skill. And that is something that we will learn and build upon. I will be making a new waistband once I put the top row of petals onto the skirt to kind of like cover the top of this of the petals if that makes any sense obviously it'll make more sense when I do it in a few months when my petals are finished but I just wanted to clarify that to make sure that you know this isn't a forever waist waistband it's just something so that I can put it around my waist and safety pin it in the back at that time I will also add snaps and a few other things that will help me distribute the weight of the petals on my body. Speaking of constructing Glinda, this is gonna be the last construction video for about a month. I have travels coming up and I also wanna remake my Morticia Adams costume before I go to KatsuCon and my other conventions that I have planned. So if you are interested in seeing me make Morticia Adams or remake it because I've already made it before but I've never made a video on it, if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel or if you are interested in seeing more work on the Glinda bubble dress, I will be coming back to it in basically an entire month. And I am sticking to an every two week upload schedule. And it's really just because there is a lot that I'm doing behind the scenes that makes it hard for me to produce as many YouTube videos right now. Obviously the dream is to be a full-time YouTuber. It's to make this my job, make this my priority, but that's just not where it is right now and that's okay. So I'm just working with what I'm capable of and doing as much as I can where I can until YouTube is my full-time thing. Thank you all seriously so much for watching these videos. I know we are on the 15th Glinda video, I'm sure, something like, something obnoxious like that, but I really do appreciate it. And for those of you that engage and like my videos, it really means so much to me and it allows YouTube to know that you like my videos so they will also spread my videos to more people who might like them. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And until next time, may all your bubble dress dreams come true.